Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Cooper, known as the Channel Guy Trader, and I'm reporting to you live from Wall Street Trading's Miami office down in sunny South Florida. Today's date is April the 17th, 2013, and here is today's After the Bell Market Summary brought to you by WallStreetTrading.com. I want to first start by taking a look to see how the indices close the day out here. The Dow Jones was down 138 points, the NASDAQ was down close to 60 points, and the S&P 500 was down a little over 22 and a half points. If we take a look at the breadth today, we had uh, 5,048 issues declining on the NYSE, NASDAQ, and the AMEX. We had 1,071 issues advancing on the NYSE, NASDAQ, and the AMEX. So breadth was in favor to the in favor to the uh, downside for the bears, uh, close to a 5 to 1. If you guys recall, on the Monday, we had breadth in favor of the bears, 10 to 1. Yesterday, on the little BS bounce that we had, we had breadth in favor to the bulls, 4 to 1. And now we're back with breadth in favor of the bears, 5 to 1. So... Yesterday's was well, yesterday's action was a little fluff action for the institutions to pretty much squeeze out the retail guys and the people that don't know what the hell they're doing. But if you're in the My Wall Street tra trading room, we're pretty much guiding you guys through the markets. And if you want to see how we traded the markets today, you can check out the midday market update uh, video that I put out earlier. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about these markets here. Starting off with the SPY. All right, the SPY closed down two dollars and thirty cents at one fifty five eleven. If you guys recall, we've been mentioning the fact that we want to see the SPY hold below 156.84. If you're looking for the downside, if you were looking for the e, if, if you were looking for the SPY to move back to the top side, you wanted to see it hold above this 156.84. Either way, this is a key level to watch from this pivot right here. So yesterday, Monday we sold down. Um, then yesterday we gapped up and traded traded up. Then today we gapped down and sold lower. So you can see there's a lot of confusion going on right here. And I would think it has to do with the action that we're getting in the dollar, the action that's happening in the commodities, and in the action that we're getting in the euro. And just the whole, f you know, the whole sentiment is starting to change a little bit in the market, okay? Um, we didn't see that those dip buyers come in today, and uh, we didn't see them come in on Friday either. We seen them come in a little bit yesterday, but the characteristics are changing a bit up here, and it's something that you have to pay close attention to. Um, so in any case, if we were to break down uh, today from today's close, target would be back down towards today's lows around 154.09, which also lined up with the decline with the rising 50-day uh, exponential and simple moving average. If we break below that level right there, which also lines up with this little support level that we had from the Friday gap down from the jobs number, which squeezed out a lot of people out the market uh, when they had a bad jobs number, they bought the market. Um, you know, next level to watch is going to be right here around this 153.22 level. We break below 153.22. We have a little slight gap that's right below 153. But in general, I would expect us to trade back down towards maybe say 152 or so. This little range breakout that we had right here. Um, top side, of course, you want to watch uh, today's highs, which is uh, 156.32. Then you want to watch that 156.84 level again. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the Qs because, as you guys know, the Qs loved, uh, they love to break out. Qs loves to break out of a little range here. Then fall, you know, fell right back in the range here. So. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at the triple Qs. All right, that 69.10 level was a key level to watch. And as you can see, they did the same thing uh, like always here. Forms a nice range. They shook you out to the downside. If you're looking to get short, they squeeze you out. Then they shook you to the long side. They squeeze you out your long trade. And now we're backside in this range. So a lot of chop action, especially in the Qs. A lot of confusion going on. And uh, guess what? This rising, this uh, bearish rising wedge pattern is still in play. All right, I'm not sure if you guys take go back and take a look, rewind the video, you'll see the volume um, that was that has been coming into the sell side. Same thing for the Qs, volume is definitely picking up here as we have all this confusion going on. And um, if we break below this trend line right here, all right, it's going to put this rising bear wedge into play. Of course, you want to see that confirmation. All right, two bar closes, but it's not looking good. All right, if we break below 67.85 and hold, look for some downside action. Uh, the target's going to be back down here towards the 67 level. We also have the 200-day moving average around here, around 66.74. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the IWM. Right, and I want to show you guys something that's pretty interesting on the ES as well. That comes from my channel analysis from earlier, um, from last year, earlier in the uh, early part of the year there. All right, IWM, you know, I was telling you guys to watch at 92.70 level. Uh, we were not able to get back above 92.70. At the same time, the IWM has been showing relative weakness intraday to the other, to the other indices for the past two weeks or so. And now um, IWM is coming back down to the support right here around 89. We kind of bounced off that level today. 
However, if we break below 89 and hold below 89, the next level you want to watch for is, I would say, 87. Okay. But at the same time, make sure you're, uh, you know, aware that this uh, there's some minor support right here from this little base, little minor base we had right here back in uh, late February, and um, you know it's it's vulnerable. All right. So we'll see. If obviously, if the SPY and the Qs were to break down, I would have to assume this is going to break down and trade lower. We're below all the key moving averages. It's not looking good. And uh looks to be some profit taking going on. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the U.S. dollar real quick. The U.S. dollar did make a nice little reverse off that key level that we were telling you guys to watch off the 82 handle. And if we continue to hold above this 82 level, uh, we could get a trade right back up to the top side and back up towards these highs, which, of course, the dollar strength will not be good for the equity markets. The uh, commodity stocks have been selling off. You know, take a look at the DBC ETF. You can see the commodity ETF is selling off and you know what is it selling us you know volume is increasing on this dollar action right here on the 82 you can also draw this little downward trend line that we've been in for the past I uh, would say two and a half weeks here and we possibly have a nice little breakout engulfing candle that took out the prior I would say one two three four five just about six days of trading all right if you were short the dollar and you were holding that short you got wiped out today's action off this one bullish engulfing candle all right and, and the euro some nice back and forth tug of war action on the euro. Um, of course, we track the euro to track the currency markets and uh, just check the overall to use it in correlation with the uh, equity markets. And the euro had a nice little reversal today, similar to what the equity markets did. They bounced up on on what the equity markets. Oh, one second, no, not actually. The euro bounced on Monday, had a sell bar, had a had a sell off on Monday, bounced on Tuesday. Had had another sell off today, so it actually did bounce with uh, the market yesterday, and yeah, it sold off with the market. So Monday bounced with the market yesterday and sold right back down. If this euro breaks today's lows around uh, 130 dollar 30, look for this thing to trade lower back down. I would say back down towards 129.53. Again, we don't trade the euro dollar, um, but I do do some of the analysis with maybe some of the traders out there that watch these videos that do trade the currency, so I can show them what I'm looking at. Let me put my channel analysis on here real quick to see what that is showing us here. And voila, what do you guys know? All right, if you guys recall from the weekend review video, I believe it was, or Monday night's video, I t mentioned the fact that we have to watch this key area right here on the uh, euro for the fact this was a little channel line that we had in my proprietary channel analysis from the breakdown right here. All right, we sold all the way down. The target was down towards the bottom of this channel, if you guys recall. All right, we hit that bottom of the channel. We bounced all the way back up, but guess what now? This whole little this little area right here from this little um, downward sloping price channel acted as resistance. The same way we had the same type of uh, action in the in the in the GDX. If you guys recall when we were trying to break back inside the channel that we broke down out of, and it acted as resistance. Same thing. Okay, so euro's not looking good. Dollar's looking strong, and that is a little mixture for some selling in the equity markets. Risk, you know, people taking risk off there. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Here? Let's go ahead and take a look at the commodities real quick. Starting off with gold. Gold had a nice little consolidation day down here near the lows of the big sell bar that we had on Monday. And yeah, we could get a bounce. We, we've been staying away from gold just because you know it could get pretty volatile. Any news could come out in gold and you could be on the wrong side of the trade. It could pop up, pop up in your favor or pop down against you, whatever side you're on. Either way, gold, you know, there's opportunity here opportunity in here but uh, we just we're we're uh, choosing to stay away from this little um, sector right now all right um i know a lot of you guys watch the gld so let's go ahead and take a look at the gld real quick and the gld was up uh, seven cents a day again gld consolidating inside of the big sell bar little triangle action going on right here if you ask me this thing's probably setting up for another leg lower a lot of uh a lot of bearish action in the commodities um we take a look at um uh, See what did I want to take a look at? Here. Take a look at the gold miners. Same thing for the gold miners. All right, I'm just running through this whole uh, macro analysis for you guys again for the fact that you know we are you know some things you know there's uh, a change in characteristics that are that are happening right now. You want to make sure you're on the right side of the market. Uh, so GDX actually broke down below Monday's lows, unlike the GLD. But um, you know this looks to go lower. In my opinion, the GDX go all the way down to 21. You want to make sure you take a look at your weekly and monthly charts to view that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at silver. All right, SLV. All right, stick with me here because I'll go over some stocks that we're watching for tomorrow. Um, if you go to the Facebook page, uh, 
Wall Street trading. You'll see some of the trades that we took in the room today, some of the ideas that we had on the table. We actually made a nice trade in CRUS, which I'll talk about that here shortly. Um, SLV inside day from Monday's big sell bar action. But, of course, if gold and the commodities start to sell, this thing will break this 22 level. Right now it's trading in the range between 23 and 22. All right. Um, copper. We've been mentioning the fact that copper has been showing relative weakness. If you take a look at FCX, FCX has been getting creamed. At the same time, I believe I mentioned FCX being being in a uh, head and shoulders pattern, which we'll take a look at here shortly. And it's breaking down off a weekly time frame on a head and shoulders pattern. That's not looking good. Um, so copper broke down below all these key levels. We talked about the zones to watch here. What, you know, back three weeks ago, four weeks ago, we mentioned the fact that copper was to hold below this 353 level. Look for it to sell down. And guess what, guys? That's exactly what's happening here. All right. So again, you want to make sure you sh make sure that you subscribe to these videos, share the videos to your trader friends, your investors. And make sure you check out the analysis on the website and all the resources that we have on the WallStreetTrading.com website. So let's go ahead and take a look at this FCX real quick because I want to show you guys um, how this copper is breaking down and how this how this uh, stock is breaking down. This company FCX. Um, just look at that action here. All right. You know, let me see. Let me put my analysis back on the chart for you guys. Um, styles. Show studies. One second. My software is kind of acting slow right now. <coughs> I mean, either way, the neckline on FCX on the weekly chart was around the $30 level there, and we're at currently trading at 28. And once the software stops acting funny, I could show you guys a weekly chart. So give me one second, please.